Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.16, the Nether update has been released. Here is 20W17A bringing you lots of new technical features, a whole bunch of world creation changes and a whole boatload of tweaks and bug fixes. My name is Sly Slime, I'm here to guide you through all the changes in this snapshot. Let's start with worlds and world generation. When entering the single player menu, the single player button will now jump you directly to the create world screen if there are no worlds to select from. There's a new button on this screen as well, it is the game rules button. This will take you to a new screen where you can change all of the game rules before starting the world. You can now also change the difficulty of the game directly from the create new world screen. Things have been changed in the world generation itself as well. The ruined portals introduced in the previous snapshot will now spawn less frequently, both in the overworld and in the nether. The variant of the ruined portal spawned in the Badlands biome has also changed, it is no longer considered a mountain style ruined portal. The distribution of the various biomes in the nether have changed. If you generate the nether in this snapshot compared to the previous ones, the biomes will now have more appropriate sizes and placements. There was a bug that caused the basalt delta blocks to override nether bricks inside of nether fortresses. That bug has been fixed in this version. A fix has been done to one of the pieces of the new bastion remnant structures that could generate with a barrier block inside of it, and the loot found in bastion remnants has been rebalanced. If you want a full rundown of the loot starting in the previous snapshot, then please see my previous snapshot video that had the full rundown. Here I will only be telling you about the changes from the previous version. Let's start with the Bastion Bridge loot table. A randomly enchanted crossbow has been added to this loot table, and the amount of spectral arrows has been reduced. It is now between 2 and 12, down from between 5 and 18. The amount of gilded blackstone has also been reduced, it is now 5 to 8, it used to be 5 to 10. The loot table for the hoglin stables has been adjusted as well, it now has a diamond shovel instead of a netherite shovel in it, and you are less likely to get the most valuable items. There are new percentages shown on screen now. The Bastion Treasure Room loot table has been updated as well. It now has between 1 and 2 rolls on the most valuable items, it used to be only 1. But on the flip side, you are less likely to get 2 Ancient Debris and more likely to get only 1. And the Netherite tools and armor pieces have all been replaced by Diamond. And finally, in the last loot table, the other Bastion loot table, the Soul Speed Book has been moved to the Valuables loot table. In addition to this, you're less likely to get the best loot and more likely to get nothing on that table. There are new percentages on the screen now. And for the Spectral Arrows, you'll now get between 2 and 15, down from between 5 and 20. Gameplay changes in this version. There is now an Entity Distance Scale option. It ranges between 50%, in which case you can only see entities in the world at half of the normal distance up to 500%, at which case you can see entities in the world at a very high distance. My advice would be that if your computer can handle it, then pull the slider upwards. Walls will now create posts under more things like pressure plates and banners and anything that covers up that wall segment. Bunch of changes to flying and creative mode. If you're flying in creative mode, flying downwards by holding shift and then brushed up against a ladder or a vine, then you would stop flying downwards that is fixed in this version. If you're flying close to the ground, then you would emit sprint particles, including soul speed particles if you had the soul speed enchant and you flew over soul sand or soul soil. Sprint particles would also generate even if you were flying in spectator mode. Those bugs have all been fixed in this version. Bug has also been fixed with sneaking, if you hit the sneak button twice then that could make you sprint instead. If you were in the one block high hitbox mode with the swimming animation or crawling and then got into a boat or minecart, or if you were flying with Elytra or a Riptide Trident and then got into a minecart or a boat, then you would keep your one block hitbox that has been fixed in this version. When it was raining in the world, then you could stand in fire without taking damage or starting to burn, that is fixed in this version. And a bunch of multiplayer fixes have been done. 
You could get kicked with a flying is not enabled on the server message when sleeping if you are moving or jumping when getting into bed. That has been fixed in this version. Only one player could open a shulker box at a time and the shulker box could also not be opened while the closing animation was playing. Those bugs have been fixed in this version. Respawning didn't check the respawn block used, so you could replace a respawn anchor with a bed in the nether and then spawn there forever. That has been fixed in this version. Dispensers now play the appropriate failure sound when attempting to charge a fully charged respawn anchor. And the test position of TNT has been changed so that TNT cannons can now once again work. More block and item changes in this version. The Soul Flyer Torch and the Soul Fire Lantern have changed names. They are now called Soul Torches and Soul Lanterns. Right clicking on a lodestone with a stack of compasses would convert the whole stack to lodestone compasses that is fixed in this version, and dropped compasses no longer always point up. Finally, using one single empty map didn't increase the used statistics for a map that is fixed in this version. Mob fixes in this version, there's a problem with mob pathfinding that didn't regard some blocks as obstructions and that meant that they could get stuck on top of them. That is fixed in this version. And a couple of fixes to piglins. Piglins would prefer unenchanted gold items instead of an enchanted gold item. Piglins with full inventories also wouldn't pick up gold ingots to barter even if you could still barter with them by right clicking directly on them. Tamed parrots can now be renamed with a name tag even if they are sitting on the ground. Striders would move extremely fast if they were moving between two blocks or when running diagonally into blocks. That is also fixed in this version. Baby Zoglings would still use the same attack damage as adult Zoglings. That is also fixed. User interface changes in this version. The looks of the smithing table user interface have been improved in this version. The recipe book now correctly crafts empty maps again. And pressing space while the recipe book button is highlighted in the crafting interfaces it now toggles the recipe book properly. And a whole boatload of things are now correctly positioned inside of the creative inventory. That includes netherite ingots, blackstone walls, polished blackstone buttons and the polished blackstone pressure plates. Finally, the checkbox texture has been updated. Sound changes in this version, there are new sounds for chain blocks for walking on them and placing or breaking them. Nether gold ore and gilded blackstone now use the same sounds as quartz ore. And the new Nether music tracks have had their volume adjusted to match those of the other soundtrack in the game. Two visual changes in this version. The saddle texture on the strider is no longer backwards, and invisible horses no longer show their patterns. Now for technical changes, let's start with commands. And then added new command, it is the attribute command. You can use this to modify attributes on any single entity. The syntax for this is attribute followed by a target specifier and the attribute name and then get with a scale, base set with the value that you want to set the base to, base get with an optional scale to get the base value, modifier add with a UUID for the modifier UUID, a name, a value and then add, multiply or multiply base. This adds a modifier but will fail if that modifier is already present. Modifier remove with the UUID which removes that modifier. Modifier value get with the UUID and the scale to get the current value of a modifier. Tag changes in this version, there are two new block tags and they are pressure plates and stone pressure plates. Changes to chat components, these are what are used in Telraw and title commands and so on. Chat component styles now also support a font property and the property specified is a resource location for a font in a resource pack. If you don't put any entry in, that is equivalent to using the Minecraft colon default value. The hover event parameter now has the contents parameter with the contents depending on the type. For show text events, that is a chat component. For show item hover events, that is either an item ID or an object with the fields ID and tag, with at least one of them being serialized NBT. For show entity type hover events, this is an object with the fields ID, which is a UUID, name, which is a chat component, and type, which is an entity type resource location. 
You can still use the old style of value argument, but that is now considered deprecated. So move your commands away from using those. Together with this, a bug has been fixed where selector and score text components didn't work properly on hover events. Another change to chat components is that the color property can now contain RGB values prefixed by a hash sign. For instance, the value hash 55 ff55 will result in the same color as the name green. Storage changes in this version, these are probably mostly interesting if you are using external tools and not so much if you deal with commands and in-game data packs and such. Anyway, saving level.dat now uses a randomly named temporary file instead of level.dat underscore new every time, and the player data files are now saved in a similar way to level.dat. Block storage formats in Chunk has been changed slightly for performance optimization reasons. It will speed up rendering, pathfinding, world generation, and so on. Anything that accesses block storage, really. The change in question is that the block states in the section's elements no longer contain values stretching over multiple 64-bit fields. That means if the number of bits per block in the block index is not a power of 2, you now get some padding bits that are unused in each 64-bit value. In addition to this, several performance and stability fixes, including fixes for several ways that commands could crash the game, and severe performance issues when using the slash locate command, especially if structure generation was turned off. And those were all the changes in the Minecraft Snapshot 20W17A. If you want to try this version out, keep in mind that snapshots are testing versions and less stable than regular versions. So if you try this version, do so on a backup of your world or on a separate test world. Remember, any world that you upgrade to a snapshot can never be downgraded to a previous version again. With that said, if you want to try this out and you don't know how to, then click on the link on the card on the video right now or in the video description. That'll take you to a tutorial video about how to get and play the latest Minecraft snapshot. And that was all I had for you this time. I hope you found this update video useful, and if you did, please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then please subscribe to this channel where I make update videos for every new snapshot, pre-release and release of Minecraft. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified when new videos are done. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.